So I skipped over an episode here because there are a lot of side quests in this game and most of them are not particularly well designed. So I'm going to end up doing them. I'm going to spend a lot of time playing the game doing the side quests, but I'm only going to show them to you if I feel like they contribute something. And for the most part, they didn't. The ones I skipped over here were more or less just reiterating on the whole, these people need help, but they don't want help from bearers kind of thing. So we're going to continue on with it. This is also going to be another episode where the bulk of it is going to be in a rather large dialogue scene, so I'm not going to be contributing any commentary until that scene ends. We are in Rosaria. Rosaria is, well, it's a name that we heard used in the Final Fantasy series a few times, but in this game it is the kingdom which Clive and Joshua and his parents and all that were from. Now, of course, Clive has been exiled of sorts for the past, what, 15 years or so. So who knows what the hell's been going on here. But as it turns out, the bearers have not done too well. Now, back when Clive was a prince here, though he wasn't in line of, in the line of succession, he, there was a bit of a mistreatment of the bearers. They were still slaves, but Clive, at the very least, tried to treat them fairly to an extent. It seems as though maybe, uh, well, if you could, ref if you could project his treatment of them onto the rest of the world or the rest of the kingdom, perhaps it was maybe one of the better places to be a bearer. But in the years since, a lot of that has deteriorated, and these bearers just get an even shorter end of the stick. This game world, despite the fact that it sort of segments everything into these smaller chunks, sort of like the way Final Fantasy XII did, it does an excellent job of conveying the scope of the world. I mean, you're looking out here and you see this enormous environment. Now, granted, a lot of that is a skybox or an environment map. So you look out there and you see something that's off in the distance. Some of that is going to be like traversable environment where you can actually go and some of it is just background decoration but they do a pretty good job of making this world seem big now it's not like skyrim or oblivion or fallout three or five or four or whatever the hell number we're at now where the objects in the environment are definitely a part of the world in some way and you can usually progress with them this game just isn't designed to function like that so it does, in fact, in a way, make the world feel larger when you're doing this, because, like, okay, so take Skyrim. you got these cities that are a few minutes' walk from each other, and each one has a population of 35 people. It's kind of weird and makes the entire world feel strangely condensed. Whereas when you take this kind of setup, and I'd say Dragon Age Inquisition did the same thing, where they segment different parts of the world off from each other and you hit loading screens, it does give you the impression that although the world itself that you play in may perhaps be smaller, it feels like the world is larger because, well, okay, so if we were to run from the sanctuary to here, it would only take us a few minutes. But when you hit the loading screen, like, well, it might have been like a day's travel. And you look out here and you don't see more than one town off in the distance because realistically there wouldn't be more than one town within view of his here so and that's the hill i'm gonna die on here so take a take from it what you will was this thing why did i kill this thing was this some kind of a look at that now some of that is places you can actually go some of it's not but you know it's pretty seamless it's hard to tell where the environment map begins and where the actual traversable environment ends. Anyway, might as well move on. It is a little bit weird that they made this environment so big that they had to have Clive be able to sprint. And sprint in a way that you can't control. So he's going to start running faster at some points when you're not going to be in fights or anything like that. Because, like, well, it just takes too long to get over this environment. I mean, I wonder if that was 
like something that they implemented later on in the game, like during development. Like how it just takes too long to get anywhere. <laughs> Have them run faster sometimes. <laughs> Quiet, isn't it? Yes. You! You're Clive Rossfield! Huh? It's me! Hannah! Rodney Murdoch's wife! Lady Hannah! Oh, I knew it was you! You haven't changed at all. The Lord Marquis and Jill, too. It's so good to see you both again. <gasps> it's good to see you, too, Lady Hannah. If you have time, you simply must come back to the house. I haven't much to offer, but what is mine is yours. We should be delighted. And you have been wandering the world ever since. I can well understand fleeing from those iron blood brutes. But oh, to take to the road at such a tender age. It uh, wasn't easy. We survived, and... And now we're back. It's wonderful to see you safe and well, Lady Hannah. <laughs> Do you think you will stay here? in Eastpool. Rosaleth still enjoys the Mother Crystal's blessing, does it not? You could always move. This house holds a lot of memories for me. So long as I can live here in peace, here I shall stay. Not that it matters. The capital is closed to civilians, by order of the Duchess. Or should I say, Her Imperial Majesty. Annabella's marriage to the Emperor of Sambrec heralded a great many changes here. Yes. Of course. Oh, forgive me. I... I didn't mean to... Oh. Please. There is nothing to forgive. Would my mother not make an exception for you and your husband? Surely she would not refuse the Lord Commander. Ah, oh. you haven't heard, then. Rodney passed away on the night of the fire. He never returned from Phoenix Gate. I... I'm sorry. Clive. My poor child. You look pale. All this traveling must have taken its toll. I insist you rest. We can talk later. Hmm? Are you sure you don't want to sleep inside? I can't. Not after what I did. Lady Hannah said she would prepare a change of clothes for you in the morning. 
She really has been very kind. Thirteen years of killing. Thirteen years without the faintest glimmer of hope. It was only Joshua that kept me going. I swore that I would avenge his death. That I would kill his killer. That was the only thing that gave my life any meaning. But if it was me who killed Joshua and Murdoch and all the others, then why the hell am I still breathing? I ask myself the same. <laughs> when I fought, hundreds died. There were so many bodies, so many lives cut short in their prime. That day in Dalmechia, I... I wanted to join them. I wanted it all to end. I couldn't bear it anymore. If living meant being that, better to be just another body. I'm sorry. Do you remember that night on the balcony, when we looked up at the moon? I said a prayer to Metia and that prayer was answered. You came back to me. The heavens must have a plan for us. We should get some rest. Right. Good night, Clive. well oh my god jill i am so sorry <laughs> oh you are sleeping in a barn but you are living in the friend zone